Hi everyone. So today I want to introduce you to my favorite person in all of history and to tell you his story. I kind of have a giant post-mortem crush on him, to be completely honest. He is easily among the most brilliant people ever to have lived, and certainly, in my opinion, the most brilliant of the 19th and 20th centuries. If even one of his insights were implemented, it would radically revolutionize the planet on every level, economically, technologically, even spiritually. So of course, not surprisingly, he became a target for political manipulation and attack. And much like Nikola Tesla, his life ended in tragedy after his work was co-opted, laying to rest what could have been the saving grace for all of life on this planet. He's known around the world as the Water Wizard, and despite his brilliance, I bet you've probably never heard of him. So keep watching to have your mind blown by a 130-year-old man. I'm Isabel Friend, I'm a water advocate and educator, and today I want to introduce you to Victor Schauberger, the water wizard. So who was this guy? Well, Victor Schauberger, if you've been following my work, then you've certainly heard me mention him before. He was a scientist and an inventor with a shamanistic relationship with water that allowed him to have a better understanding of water's properties and nature than any modern hydrologist. Exponentially so, no comparison really. He saw the direction that humanity was headed even a hundred years ago, and he wrote explicit warnings detailing exactly where we would end up if we didn't change our relationship to water. And this is where we find ourselves, with massive worldwide drought and desertification, climate change, and general global madness, ignorance, and mayhem. He knew water as the lifeblood of the earth, and he knew that it's not only the progenitor of life, it's also the physical body of consciousness itself, an insight which indig indigenous wisdom echoes, and which modern research into the quantum phases of water is just now beginning to glimpse. So Victor grew up in Austria in the late 1800s in an old growth forest where he studied the movement patterns of water. And by the early 1900s, he had learned how to work with the powers of nature to create inventions like powerful free energy machines, transportation technologies, even levitational devices. So consider this. Nature never slows down or suffers from entropy. She is always prolifically creating life and sustaining life and recycling life for billions, trillions of years. And nature does this through the movement of water through plants and bodies and ecosystems, right? Nature is an integral part in creating and sustaining life. So by understanding the movements of water, Schauberger was able to uncover the energy generating principle that sustains everything. And by harnessing that force, he was able to create technologies that work in harmony with the earth instead of against it. So basically, he showed that there are two forms of motion in nature, explosive and implosive, or outward and inward. And the outward motion is expansive and destructive. It generates heat and pressure and even death. It's what nature uses when she wants to break down, to decompose, to decay. It's an important part of nature, but it expends more energy than it creates, and it can be harmful. So go figure, all of human technology is currently based on this explosive principle. It's fire-based, combustion engines and nuclear power and coal, anything that radiates outward. On the other hand, the inward implosive quality of water produces coolness, suction, powerful vortices and vitality. It's used to build up and to energize. It's life enhancing and life promoting. Think of the way that sap spirals up a tree or blood spirals through your veins or the way that plants grow in spiral patterns, or the way that a river courses through its banks in a horizontal spiral, all of these vortexes are implosive. They're energy-generating flows that sustain life. So if we were to switch our paradigm to water-based implosive rather than fire-based explosive, we could put an end to the drought and desertification on this planet. Schauberger showed how deserts could be turned into lush food forests and revealed the process by which water can actually reproduce herself. Now, Schauberger's discoveries hold the promise of a planet of blooming deserts, abundant crops, and thriving people and ecosystems. But of course, 
no one profits from free energy and abundance for all. You know, blue gold is more valuable than black gold in a world where the source of life is in finite supply and the demand is infinite. He who controls the source of life controls the lives of those who need it to survive, right? So with capitalism being the explosive growth-based force that it is in this world, Schauberger's wisdom was quelled. And in a way, he predicted that too, because that has been the case for all water wisdom keepers throughout history. They've all been censored and even attacked. Schauberger actually said, protecting the secret of water is a means to protect the interest power of money or capitalism. Only in an economy of scarcity can interest thrive. The price of food and the cost of mechanical power would sink to such low levels that speculators would be able to gain nothing from them. Free access to nutrition and mechanical energy possible through water are such radical ideas that our concept of the world and all ideologies would be turned upside down. The secret of water is the capital of capital, which is why any attempt to reveal it is ruthlessly terminated. So eventually, his genius caught the attention of the wrong people, and Hitler met with him in 1934 to discuss the potential weaponization of water, but he refused to collaborate with the Nazis, and his resistance landed him in an internment camp, one of the most horrific death camps in the Third Reich, Mauthausen, in Austria. And against his will, he was forced to work on a prototype of a gravity-defying machine called the Vril 7, and that's where he first harnessed water's levitational properties to create an anti-gravity device called a repulsine. Now, after the war, the British, Americans, and Russians were all fighting over the spoils of war, especially the human resources, especially geniuses, and along with scores of other scientists, Schauberger became a natural target. And what remained of his work fell into the hands of American and Russian agents. But it was the Americans who took possession of Schauberger himself and actually held him prisoner and made him disclose his work. So God knows what they did to him, but he was never the same after that. Afterward, when they had no more use for him, they set him free, and when he got back to Austria, he was a shell of a man, according to those who knew him. He told them that, they had, that the Americans had stolen his soul, and then soon after that, Schauberger died, a broken and penniless man. Well, it's time for a resurgence of his wisdom. It's time for a revival of his discoveries. It's time for every single person to know his name because we cannot hope to cure illnesses that cause death if we continue to ignore the source of life and treat it as though it itself is dead. We cannot hope to put an end to deadly wars if the most precious resource is still so unevenly distributed. And the correlation between conflict and drought is so directly parallel, it's staggering, by the way. We can't hope to put an end to global warming without the cooling effects of water, of restoring imbalanced hydrological cycles. When we ally with water, we thrive. But when we treat her as our worst enemy, using her as a carrier for chemical weapons and pesticides and toxic sludge and sewage, and then imprisoning her in stagnant reservoirs and more, things that would be inhumane, and unthinkable to do to any living being, and yet we do this to the source of life itself. To dishonor water is to act in opposition to life itself. And let me tell you something, what we do to our water, we do to ourselves. What we do to our water, we do to ourselves, because we are water. And the waters that surround us on this earth become the waters within us as our own blood. It's only by forgetting this simple truth that humanity has gotten ourselves mired into the seemingly unsolvable mess that we're in. So it's time to remember, we are not defending water. We are water defending herself. Water is life. And that means if we want a future filled with life, vivacity, and thriving ecosystems, we must honor water first. There is no other way. There are band-aids and there are shortcuts and there are temporary solutions, but if we want life to thrive on this planet, we must first and foremost ensure that water thrives. And Schauberger laid it all out in his brilliant work. So you can read a bit more about him and find more resources on his work at the latest blog post over at waterislife.love. And if you want to learn more about some of the mysterious and magical qualities of water, then check out my free webinar also on the website. And I really hope you've enjoyed this. If you've learned something new, please comment, share, like, subscribe, etc., etc. And if you want to stay in the loop about water, you can check out my newsletter at waterislife.love. Follow me on Instagram at Jen Isabel Friend, or join our Bodies of Water Facebook group to join the conversation. So I hope you all have a very blessed day and stay hydrated.